The previous video in the playlist looked at this specification here and below this we can see we've got the NS chart that we used to design for this specification and here we can see the computer program. When the program runs this line here will execute and the user will enter a value for the person's age. Now on this line we can see we're asking is the number just been entered by the user greater than or equal to 18. Now if that's true this is executed collect your polling card. However if this test here is false this is executed you are too young to vote. Now if you're not quite sure on this particular program please watch the previous video in the playlist. What we're going to do here, we're going to move on and amend this specification so we can introduce another feature of the Python language and that is the nesting of selection constructs within each other. Now here we can see the amendment. If the user enters their age as 17 they are still told they are too young to vote but in addition they are told that they can vote next year. So the first step is obtain the user's age and then we follow that by a selection construct which we can see here. Now there are two routes through the selection construct. This route, the true route where we display collect your polling card and the false route where we display you are too young to vote. Now in the false route we need to ask another question and that question would be are you 17? And if they are 17 then we display you can vote next year. So in the false route we put this selection construct which is an if selection construct. So this we can see is nested inside the outer if else selection construct and that's where the term nested come from. It's kind of inside, nestled inside. But if we have a look at this selection construct we can see there's this that can be executed if they are 17, in other words if it's true and if they're not 17 then we can see we have this empty to represent that which means we don't take any action there are no program statements in other words we either execute this one here or we don't execute it that's what it means so let's just take an example let's say the user age entered here is 18 we ask the question are you old enough the answer is obviously yes so it's true so we display collect your polling card. Now let's enter 16 at this step. We ask are you old enough? The answer is false. So we come to here and we display you are too young to vote. Then we come to this step and we say are you 17? No they're not, they're 16 so it's false. So we don't execute this. Let's have another route through it. Let's now enter 17. We ask, are you old enough? It's false. So we choose this route. We display, you are too young to vote. Then we ask, are you 17? And the answer is yes. So this is done. Display, you can vote next year. Here we can see the design as represented by the NS chart and the Python code that implements this design next to each other so we can compare them. This step in the NS chart is represented here in the Python code by this line. This outer if else selection construct is shown here and we can see that it has the if and the else representing it. This line of code collect your polling card is shown here as print collect your polling card. Now we can see that this particular line is indented by usually four spaces and this indentation is there because Python requires an indentation to tell it that this is within the selection construct and in fact this line is in the true path of the if else selection construct. This step shown in the NS chart appears in the program code here and we can see that this is indented also by four spaces and it comes immediately after the else because this is the false part and we can see that this is within the false part of the NS chart. 
This represents the if selection construct and it appears within the code here and we can see it appears indented, indented by four spaces. Now this indentation is necessary because this if selection construct is nested within this if else selection construct and in fact it is nested within the else part of this outer if else selection construct. Let's now consider a test plan for the program we've just looked at. Now within the program there are two selection constructs that have these, age greater than or equal to 18 in one of the selection constructs and the other one is asking is age the same as 17. Now we need to consider the boundaries which are at 18 and the other boundaries at 17 which we take from these relational tests here. Now. We therefore need to have a test plan which looks at entering 16, 17, 18 and 19. And such a test plan is actually shown here. And we can see that when we input the age at 16, we're expecting the program to output you are too young to vote. And when they enter 17, we expect the program to output you are too young to vote. Together with you can vote next year. Now when the user enters 18, we are simply expected to say collect your polling card and when they enter 19 we expect it to say collect your polling card. And of course it's for you to decide what the actual output is and whether the test has been passed or failed when you have a go at entering this program yourself and running it. I'm not going to do that in the video. We'll now test the program by entering 16. Well this line we can see has produced this user friendly message here. And at this particular prompt, we enter 16. And a variable is created which stores 16. So we now come on to this line, which is asking, is age greater than or equal to 18? Which is really saying, is 16 greater or equal to 18? Well, it's clearly false. So this is not executed. We go to the else part, which is the false part. And this line is executed here and consequently we will have the output being you are too young to vote. We will then come here and ask is age the same as 17? Well it's got 16 stored in its age, 16 isn't the same as 17 so this is not executed and then of course this small program finishes executing as we can see by these chevrons here. We'll now run the program again. This time we'll enter 17. So this line is responsible for this user-friendly prompt here. So we will enter 17 at the keyboard, press the enter key, at which point the variable age will be created and in it we can see we have 17 stored. So then we go on to this line which is asking is age greater than or equal to 18? Which is really asking is this 17 greater than or equal to 18? Clearly it isn't so this is false. Consequently, we go to this bit of the program, the bit that comes after the else, because that's where we deal with the false. And we execute this line here, print you are too young to vote, which we then can see will appear here in the runtime. We then go on to this line, which is asking is age the same as 17? Well, is 17 the same as 17? Of course it is, so that is true. In which case we do execute this here, you can vote next year. And we can see that that then appears in the runtime here. And then of course the program ends as represented by this chevron here. We will now run the program again using 18 as the input as taken from our test plan. So we can see that we have this user friendly prompt. We enter 18 which generates the variable containing 18. We then come here and we're asking is 18 greater than or equal to 18? Well in fact we can see it's equal to 18 so this is true in which case we execute this line of code and we can see it says collect your polling card. What follows the else is not executed. Remember this is a selection construct so none of this is executed because that was the false path and we can see the program ends, hence we get these chevrons here. We will now run the program against the next entry in the test plan and we can see we have the user friendly message here, please enter your age. So we'll now enter 19 and of course that will generate a variable containing 19. We will now come to here in the program and ask is 19 greater than or equal to 18? 
well it's clearly greater than so this is true in which case we will execute this line of code here collect your polling card we do not execute any of this because this is in the false part so we can see that when this executes we get collect your polling card appear here and because this isn't executed the program now ends and of course we now can see these chevrons appearing which confirm the end of the program now what you need to do is to enter this program yourself and test it but make sure you test it against all of the entries in the test plan as demonstrated in this particular video check out the supporting website for these videos and consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and you'll get an automatic update every time I upload a new video on Python